Pixar released their newest movie Turning Red on March 11, 2022. And just like everything they do, it's absolutely jam-packed with secrets, references, and Easter eggs. Let's look at 21 of the best ones that Pixar hid in Turning Red. Pixar loves including references to their previous movies, and Turning Red is no exception. This one is also one of the hardest in the whole movie to spot. When May and her friends are in the girls' bathroom making plans to see Four Town live in concert, there's another Pixar character hiding out in the scene. It's hard to spot, but if you look closely, you'll see Nemo, or at least a sticker that just so happens to look suspiciously like everyone's favorite clownfish. And there's a lot more hidden Pixar references, too. There's not one, but two references to the next Pixar film. The first is a little easier to spot, but that doesn't mean that most viewers didn't miss it the first time. As May goes gaga over a boy, just like her, you were probably distracted by his perfect hair flip. But if you weren't, you might have noticed that he's wearing a green t-shirt with the word escapula on it. Escapula, which means scapula or shoulder blade in English, is the punk rock trio that appeared in the Battle of the Band scene in Coco. This next is incredibly obscure, but you might have noticed if you really know your Coco details. Look in the background when May is running through the streets of Toronto after turning into a red panda at school. When she runs into a couple that's walking down the street and scares them, there's colorful pieces of paper hung on strings. These are called papel picado, which translates to punched or perforated paper in English. These are traditional decorations in Mexico that were also featured heavily in Coco during the Dia de los Muertos celebrations. The next Pixar reference is probably the most hidden of all, though. There's a super hidden reference to a Pixar movie that isn't even out yet. Just like how there was an incredibly hidden reference to Turning Red in the form of a four-town record in Luca, you'll need really sharp eyes to spot this one. Did you catch what it was? Along with a bunch of other stickers on Miriam's skateboard is the logo for Star Command, the galactic organization that Buzz Lightyear belongs to, which we'll see much more of in Buzz's upcoming origin story film. The robot cat Sox, who will also be in Lightyear, also makes an appearance as a sticker on the skateboard. And of course, it wouldn't be a Pixar movie if the Pizza Planet truck from Toy Story didn't show up somewhere. Pixar makes sure that the Pizza Planet truck appears in all of their movies, and you can spot it in Turning Red when May's running through the streets of Toronto on her way to the Four Town concert. Pizza Planet's logo can also be seen on the pizza boxes at Tyler's birthday party. Speaking of when May is rushing to get to the Four Town concert, look at the pose she takes when she finally embraces her inner red panda and decides to keep her transformation power. She leaps into the night sky where she's framed in slow motion against the moon. Does her very specific pose remind you of anything? It probably does if you're an anime fan since it's a direct reference to many anime characters, including Sailor Moon, another seemingly average schoolgirl who possesses magical powers. And Turning Red has more direct homages to other famous media. Take Four Town, the boy band that May and her friends are obsessed with, for example. When they perform at the Sky Dome, which is also a real place in Toronto, by the way, though it's now known as the Rogers Center, each member of the band is wearing their own take on an all-white outfit. This is exactly the same style that a real boy band used. Who is Four Town mimicking? It's the Backstreet Boys in their 1999 video for I Want It That Way. And you almost definitely missed another detail at the Four Town concert, too. There's a great reveal in the movie that, just like May and her friends, Tyler is also a huge Four Town fan. But he's not the only person who has been a secret Four Town supporter for the whole time. You only get a brief glimpse, but look who can be seen in the crowd. That's right, it's May's very own merman crush, Devin. And not only is he attending the concert, but he's also so excited that he's brought his disposable camera to snap a couple of photos. Cameras on phones weren't quite as mainstream in 2002 when the movie takes place. Once things really start going nuts at the concert, not because of the music, but because of May's mom rampaging in her giant red panda form, there are some of the hardest to spot Easter eggs in the whole movie. Pixar includes a reference in all of their films to A113, which is the number of a room at the California Institute of the Arts where many of their animators went to school. Turning Red has not one, but two incredibly hard to spot instances of this Easter egg, the first being on the line shocker Dad's pushing during the ritual, and the second coming after the credits, when we see a pair of Four Town tickets that also have an A113 reference on them. Pixar's short films are sometimes just as memorable as the longer movies, but they often come before, and Pixar made sure to include some references to them as well. This first one makes perfect sense to show up in Turning Red, since it has a very direct connection to the film. Look in the background when May's getting off the bus and see if you recognize anything. This one is tough since it's hidden among a bunch of other signs, but there's one that says bow. If you don't remember it, think back to The Incredibles 2 and the short that was shown before it. That's right, the short was of course Bao, and tells the story of a steamed bun that comes to life. Both Bao and Turning Red were written and directed by the same person, and the sign even uses the same font as the title in the film. And the steamed buns known as Bao show up a few minutes later too, when May helps her parents prepare a fresh batch. Bao are clearly very close to the writer-director Domi Shi's heart. 
But Bao isn't the only short that gets a reference in Turning Red. Just like most of us were in the late 90s and early 2000s, Mei is obsessed with her Tamagotchi-like digital pet. She even hangs it on her desk right where she can see it as she does her homework. But what gets a position of importance right next to her treasured possession? A ball of yarn with eyes? Well, that's not just any ball of yarn with eyes. That's Pearl from the 2018 Pixar short of the same name. And it appears that May is a fan of a lot of different Pixar shorts, since later, when she tries to hide from her mom what she's been working on, we get a glimpse at the back of her notebook. Along with a couple of other stickers is a very specific bunny. Do you recognize this one? It's the cute little bunny from the 2020 Pixar short Burrow. Burrow tells the story of a rabbit who is trying to build the perfect home but keeps accidentally digging into other bunnies' burrows, which causes her to become very embarrassed. Ha! Huh, a character dealing with embarrassing situations as they try to achieve their dreams? I wonder why May relates to this character so much. And it's not just Pixar films that May seems to be a fan of. Watch as May and her friend Priya share an elaborate handshake at school. Does it seem familiar? What if I asked if it felt fresh? That's right, it's a reference to the handshake that Will Smith and DJ Jazzy Jeff would perform on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Did you spot Pixar's famous ball in Turning Red? The one that Luxo the Lamp likes to play with during the Pixar title screen? It's appeared in just about every Pixar film, and this one is no exception. You only get a brief glimpse of it, but look at the pool in Tyler's birthday party and you'll spot it floating near the diving board. You might think that they wouldn't have been able to cram so many details into one movie, but there are still so many more, some of which you've definitely missed. Take for instance when May is giving her mom a presentation on just why she must be allowed to attend the Four Town concert. Not only is it clearly an extremely elaborate and well-planned presentation, which fits perfectly with May's overachieving character, complete with comparisons of the boy band to famous classical musicians like Mozart and Beethoven, but did you notice anything special about May's costume? Don't allow yourself to be distracted by the sparklers, because she puts on one very special article of clothing to help seal the deal. That's right, May is wearing the same green blazer that her mom sports throughout the movie. After all, you know what they say, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and there's other incredible details you likely missed in the film too. Like when May is confined to her room after her parents learn that she's grown into her red panda power. It might seem cruel that they've taken all of her possessions out of her bedroom, leaving only a mattress on the floor, but you can see that it's for a good reason. If you look at the floors, wall, and door, you'll see that they're covered in scratches and paw prints, further showing that May can't yet be trusted to control herself when she turns into a magical animal. Even the window blinds and curtains have been damaged. Nothing safe, apparently. Another detail that probably was missed comes courtesy of May's grandmother, who after spotting the fours that are being projected into the sky from the Four Town concert, comments that four is the worst number. It might seem completely random to have a least favorite number, but in Chinese culture some people believe that the number four is unlucky. That's because when speaking Cantonese, the number four is pronounced very similarly to the word death. This connection has made some people actually afraid of the number, and some Chinese buildings will even omit the fourth floor, jumping straight from third to fifth just like how some buildings in the United States will choose not to have a 13th floor. And there's more details at the temple when they're having dinner. Like with the red panda statues outside, as May enters the temple for the first time in the movie, she greets each of the panda statues, giving one a high five and one a belly rub. She also calls out their name, Bart and Lisa, a clear nod to Bart and Lisa Simpson. But there's more secrets hidden in the temple. Take another look at the cats, who look to be living a very comfortable life inside the walls. Do they look familiar to you? Cast your mind all the way across the world, not to China but to Italy. That's right, if you're a fan of Luca, then you might have thought that those cats bear a striking resemblance to Massimo's cat Machiavelli. Their fur might be a little longer and their coloring is different from their Italian feline counterpart, but their design is clearly meant to be the same. Perhaps those gatos are from the same familia. And you might think it's random, but May's mom's license plate is one of the most important details in the whole movie. The license plate spells out the word systems and is meant to honor the systems team at Pixar, who thanks to their hard work allowed the animators and other crew on Turning Red to continue working on the film from their own homes. Make sure you subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie facts, trivia, and Easter eggs. Did you know that Four Towns' hit song Nobody Like You was written by one of the most famous musical artists in the world? The music and lyrics to the song were written by Phineas O'Connell and his sister Billy O'Connell, though you probably know her better as Billie Eilish. That's right, now you don't have to be so surprised that the main song in Turning Red turned out to be a smash hit. Billy and her brother tried to channel the golden age of boy bands from the late 1990s and early 2000s with all three songs they wrote for the soundtrack. So if you like Nobody Like You, make sure you also check out One True Love and you know what's up. The lyrics to Nobody Like You have a secret as well. 
While most of the song sounds like it's about having a crush on someone with these lines like, had friends and I've had buddies, it's true, but they don't turn my tummy the way you do. There's also lines that tell the listener, I'm never not by your side, I'll never not be your ride or die, which also could be interpreted to be about the super strong bond that May has with her group of friends. It's no wonder why May, Miriam, Priya, and Abby are such big fans. They're such big fans, in fact, that much of the movie revolves around them trying to get enough money to buy tickets so they can go see Four Town live in concert. Later, when May and her friends come together with the rest of May's family to try and seal Ming Lee's giant panda power away, the boys from Four Town join in as well. And there's yet another Backstreet reference. Did you catch what it was? This one is even more subtle than the outfits, and you have to be a Backstreet Boys super fan to catch it. But if you are, you might have recognized the dance move that they bust out while on top of a pile of rubble. It's the exact same one from the famous Backstreet Boys music video for everybody, Backstreet's Back, a video that also happened to be featuring them turning into monsters. This next detail is so hidden you definitely missed it in the movie, because it's not even in the movie. If you visit the official Four Town website, you can find short biographies for each of the band members, and it's there that we learn that Robert is a Toronto native who will eventually go on to have a successful solo career, and that Aaron Z coordinates a lot of their dance moves. But the real shock comes from what we learn about Jesse. Not only do we discover that he's the oldest member of the group and was getting a degree in ceramics, but that he's actually a father. That's right, can you believe it? Jesse from Four Town has two kids, and he credits them with helping to bring him back down to earth. And did you notice anything special about Tae Young? Because a lot of fans of another certain supergroup have, Tae is the youngest member of the group and an animal lover who fosters injured doves back to health between tours. But what's most amazing about him is how much he seems to be based on Jim Min from the highly popular South Korean group BTS. Not only does Tae Young bear a striking resemblance to Jim Min during his idol era, right down to the shaggy blonde hair and crooked front tooth, but they also both like to make the same heart-shaped gesture with their hands. Oh, and in case you are wondering, according to the Four Town website, true fans of the group are officially called Four Townies. There's another detail you almost definitely missed at the Four Town concert too. There's a great reveal in the movie that just like May and her friends, Tyler is also a huge Four Town fan. But speaking of Tyler, did you notice that he has a band-aid under his eye? You might think this is a random character detail or an injury that happened off screen for some reason, but as we all know by now, there's no such thing as an unintentional detail in a Pixar movie. This is another reference to the early 2000s music scene, but not to a boy band. Now, it would appear that Tyler's musical tastes are many and varied, since this is a reference to rapper Nelly, who wore a bandage under his eye at first because of a basketball injury, but then as a fashion statement as well as a tribute to one of the members of the Saint Lunatics. And there's one more secret Four Town superfan. If you stick around after the credits, you get treated with one of the best scenes in the movie. Down in the basement, we get to see May's father, Jin, jamming out to You Know What's Up. He even has some official Four Town merch, and based on his glasses, it would appear that Jesse is his favorite. Maybe he relates to him as a fellow father. Did you know that Four Town has international appeal? It's not just May and her friends who are obsessed with the boys, but if you look closely in the scene in Luca, you can actually see one of the boys' records. Of course, it's been translated to Luca's native Italian, where they're called Four Villaggi. Villaggi translates to villages in English, and village is, of course, pretty similar to the word for town. Make sure you subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie facts, trivia, and Easter eggs. May and the rest of her family turn into giant red pandas when they have powerful emotions. But why is May's mom, Ming Li's panda, so much bigger than the rest when it comes out at the end of the movie? It has to do with those powerful emotions, but not in the way that you think. The first hint comes when Ming Li tells May the story of their ancestor, Sun Yi. During a time of war, Sun Yi and her daughters were left alone without any protection, so one night, during a red moon, she asked the gods for a way to keep her family safe by turning into her favorite animal, a red panda. The gods granted her wish, and Sun Yi was given the ability to turn into a giant red panda, but only by harnessing intense emotions. This makes sense, as Sun Yi would need that power only when something happened that could cause extreme emotional distress, like if bandits attacked their village. Sun Yi passed this ability on to her daughters so that they'd be safe, even after she was gone, and they, in turn, could protect their family, passing that same gift down to their daughters and to their daughters and on and on, until we get to Ming Li and Mei. As Ming Li tells the story to Mei, we actually get an image of Sun Yi in her red panda form, and did you notice anything special about it? That's right, it's also a gigantic red panda towering above a village, just like Ming Li appears as she stomps through the streets of Toronto. So then, why is Ming Li's panda the size of Sun Yi's while well, all the other family members we see, including Mei, are much smaller? It's very likely that while heightened emotions are all it takes to turn into a red panda, the intensity of those emotions are ultimately what determines the size. 
See a boy you have a crush on? Poof! Turn into a big but not ridiculously sized red panda. Your village gets attacked by a horde of marauding bandits? Poof! You turn kaiju-sized like a Godzilla red panda ready to stomp your enemies into pancakes. Of course, there are no bandits at the end of the movie, so then why did Ming Li suddenly turn into the mega monster red panda? Because she thought there were bandits. That's right, a ruthless gang of thieves known as Four Town, ready to steal her daughter's precious heart. It might sound dramatic, but the film does a good job setting this up. We see much earlier in the movie just how protective of Mei Ming Li can be, especially when it comes to dating and boys. A couple of doodles of Daisy Mart clerk Devin as a merman are all it takes to set her off and rush down to the store to confront him. We've also already seen what Ming Li thinks of Four Town and the idea that Mei is at their concert and might even be having, let's say, romantic feelings toward them is enough for her to feel like an invading army has just shown up outside the walls and she grows to the size needed to defeat such an army. You might argue that maybe Ming Li's panda is just bigger than everyone else's, but the movie actually shows us that her panda is not always that big. At the end of the movie, in the mystical bamboo forest, we see Ming Li's red panda is bigger than the rest, but not nearly as big as it is when it rips the roof off the sky dome. This is probably because of the way she bottled up her emotions, especially when it came to dealing with her own mother. When Mei goes to the concert though, she literally believes that her daughter's life is in danger in some way, and so her form reflects what's needed to save her which leads to the truly gigantic size. So it isn't so much that Ming Li's red panda is so much bigger than the others, it's that she's the only one who felt that way at the moment to bring out her inner giant red panda. But that also means that since Mei kept her red panda power, the potential is still there to bring out a truly gigantic one in the future. And we can all sleep a little safer at night knowing that if Toronto is ever besieged by brigands, there's a 30-story tall fur baby ready to answer the call. I hope you liked the video and found some things you missed the first time in Turning Red. Make sure you subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie facts, trivia, and Easter eggs.